Is another hard frost likely? Are there going to be thick fog patches once more on Wednesday morning? Are we in for severe gales in northern Scotland? All these questions will be answered during this Met Office deep dive. Plus, what about beyond the shorter term? Into next week, are you on half term? We'll look at the weather for then and beyond that. What about at the end of the month? Are there signs of an SSW? Again, all of these questions and more will be answered in the next 20 to 30 minutes. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're enjoying these deep dives and then you'll never miss one. My name's Alex Deakin. I'm a weather presenter and meteorologist here at the Met Office. First of all, let's take a look at what happened during Tuesday morning because uh, it was a foggy start in places. Let's just fast forward to this morning and this is the satellite image. You can see quite a bit of cloud across parts of northern Britain. Further south, it looks clear, doesn't it? But that's the infrared image. If we put the visible satellite picture on and you can just about make out there, if we zoom in, some thick fog patches across parts of southern England, the Midlands and South Wales. But by lunchtime, they were out of the way. And so we had plenty of sunshine across the south this morning and that will continue through the rest of today and indeed uh, we'll keep the clear skies tonight hence why we are looking at a frost further north we do have some patchy cloud but not much in the way of rainfall what will happen as we go through the next 24 hours well we're not going to see a great deal of change we will continue with the clear conditions across the south and i think further north we'll have a little bit of patchy cloud at times but nothing producing too much in the way of rainfall, maybe just the odd spot here and there over the southern uplands and the uh, Cumbrian fells. But uh, generally, as we go through the evening and overnight, the biggest issue will be the fog thickening up once more across parts of the south. So if we pause it there for tomorrow morning's rush hour, this is quite dense fog across parts of England and Wales, perhaps a little further north into maybe parts of northern England uh, compared to Tuesday morning. Further north, it won't be as foggy because there'll be more of a breeze, there'll be more cloud around, and that will also help to keep the temperatures up because uh, as well as the fog overnight tonight, we are looking at a frost forming. If we put the minimum temperatures on easily down to freezing and uh, well below actually in some rural spots as we head into Tuesday morning, down to zero, one at best in towns and cities. Actually, many urban areas will be a few degrees below freezing and certainly well below in the countryside. Further north though, look at those temperatures staying well above freezing here because of the cloud and because of those winds. If we take a look at what happens during the course of tomorrow, those winds will be strengthening further. And actually we have a Met Office warning in place uh, for Northwest Scotland. As the winds start to increase during tomorrow, we're gonna see uh, that warning. Let's just scroll back a little bit. Pause it there because uh, the warning is in place across northwest Scotland for pretty much all of Wednesday. The wind's picking up through the night and the warning across the Outer Hebrides and parts of the northwest of Scotland covering gusts of wind 65, maybe 70 miles an hour as the band of rain arrives, which it will do late in the day. Those winds could gust up further with a squally feature, as we call it, where the winds just suddenly whip up and that could generate gusts of 75 miles an hour. Those kind of winds likely to cause some travel issues, certainly the potential for disruption with the bridges being closed and ferry services certainly likely to be disrupted as well. So we will see strong winds across northwestern parts as we go through the course of Wednesday. And we do have a Met Office yellow warning in place. More details on that, of course, on our website and on our app. Let's take a look at the range of winds tomorrow because they're really quite interesting. If we take a look at uh, how the winds will vary across the map, so these are the wind gusts going through today and tomorrow. And if I just move my finger up and down, you can see these are the winds where my finger is. So across parts of central southern England, the gust of wind really quite light through today and tomorrow. But if I just head northwards, head into northern Scotland, see how those rise, those gusts of wind rise around the outer Hebrides there. Look at that, the winds just steadily picking up through the night and then that peak gust tomorrow morning before they actually drop off quite quickly tomorrow. Once the weather front has gone through, we will see those winds dropping off quite sharply uh, across the far northwest and compare and contrast further south. Again, those winds picking up close to Glasgow, but here we're talking gusts of 40, maybe 50 miles an hour in the outside and, outside and further south, those winds much, much lighter, hence 
why that will allow the fog and the frost to form in the south because when you've got windy conditions that mixes the air up and it doesn't allow the temperatures to drop so you don't get the fog and the frost. So light winds in the south compared with those very gusty conditions much further north and as I say we do have that uh, weather warning in place. The winds will suddenly start to pick up particularly as the weather front arrives. Uh, let's take a look at that weather front so let's take the well let's show you the jet stream first of all actually let's take the pressure off because the jet at the moment is to the north of the UK where it's been for a while and it's quite an active jet but it's, it's in this position and it's really remaining in that position if we fast forward for the next few days it dips at times but generally speaking that the jet stream is in that position to the north of the UK between the UK and Iceland up here in this uh, area and when the jet is in this position what that means for the pressure pattern is that the jet is taking the low pressure systems that's what the jet stream generally does develops and pushes low pressure systems so when the jets up here that's where the low pressures tend to get steered and that is allowing this area of high pressure to dominate and again if we run backwards in time over the course of the weekend just gone and almost record high pressure across uh, parts of England and Wales and that high has never really moved away. These weather fronts try and dip southwards but actually the general theme as we head into the weekend is that high pressure will continue to dominate. And high pressure means the air is generally sinking which means you're not going to get much in the way of rainfall. So it remains in this kind of setup with the jet stream to the north and the pressure generally high across the UK. The closer you are to these lows and those weather fronts well that's where you are going to see some windy weather hence why we have that warning across northwest Scotland tomorrow and at times as these weather fronts sink southwards there will be some rain. So that is the weather front that will bring the rain into northwest Scotland during tomorrow and it crosses and the isobars really pinch together on the front of that. Let's just zoom in on that see, because that's really just notice how those isobars really pinching together and then they open up as that weather front moves through they really kind of open up hence why those winds will suddenly peak and then just drop off quite dramatically as that weather front sinks southwards. And as it does sink southwards, it's bumping up against that area of high pressure and it's really fizzling out. So that by Thursday, even though that weather front will bring heavy rain across northwest Scotland, as it pushes southwards, it's just weakening all the time. So we're only going to see a few spots of uh, drizzly rain across parts of the south on Thursday. And the main theme is for the weather to remain dry across the south for the foreseeable future, even into the weekend. It is going to stay on the chilly side for the next few days, but the likelihood is that as we run through, let's just zoom out a little bit, as we run through into the weekend, as the high re-establishes itself, what we are going to see is this set of weather fronts just trickling its their way across to the northwest. They're not going to bring much rainfall, but in here, what's, what's called a warm sector. So we've got some milder air pushing back in across the UK. So it's going to stay on the coolish side across the south in particular for the next few days. But by the time we get to Friday, that milder air is starting to topple in and it stays in place then as we go through the weekend. So that's the temperature trend through the weekend. We are going to see temperatures rising. So frosty conditions tonight in the south touch of frost maybe on Thursday morning as well but generally we're going to lose those frost as the air starts to rise and the temperatures start to come back up and we can show you that with the uh, maximum minimum temperatures over the next few days. So if we just pick out we'll start with uh, London and you can see here those minimum temperatures close to freezing tonight and then these are the minimum temperatures up to five or six by the time we get into the weekend and the daytime temperatures will be back up to double figures. As for Glasgow here again we're, going, we're, we're not too cold here at the moment actually and those temperatures will remain generally a touch above average perhaps getting back up to double figures through the course of the weekend and here because we've got the westerly winds and a lot of cloud we're not really seeing the frost so Glasgow temperatures not particularly low at the moment those nighttime temperatures remain fairly consistent but we will see that milder air bumping the temperatures even here back up above 10 degrees Celsius as we go through the rest of this week. So the main themes to pick out for this week, yes, fog and frost overnight in the south for the next couple of nights, those strong winds on Wednesday across the northwest, but otherwise the main theme into the weekend, a lot of dry weather and it will be turning milder. What about after that and as we go into next week? Well, let's take a look at some charts for that. Uh, and this, let's stick with the temperature theme. 
because this is the probability of temperatures reaching 10 degrees or more. So it's not a temperature map, it's not showing what the temperatures are going to be. This is the probability with the oranges here, 40 to 80% chance probability of temperatures. This is at 12 o'clock of being above 10 degrees Celsius. Quite a strong signal here through next week of those temperatures, particularly across uh, central and eastern England, of being above 10 Celsius, hinting that the milder weather once it arrives through the weekend is likely to last into next week. However, we are set to see a bit of a pressure change, a pressure pattern change as we go through next week, as this chart quite clearly shows. This is when we run the computer models many, many times, we get a, a probability of the most likely pressure pattern across the country. Now, as we've seen, the high pressure is set to dominate for the next few days, up to and including the weekend. That's these orange bars here, the probability almost 100% for the next few days of that high pressure dominating across the UK. But these blues take control from Monday onwards and these blue bars indicating much more changeable weather, more likely to see uh, low pressure systems closer to the UK and southwesterly, the dark and the light blue, the difference between southwesterly and northwesterly winds dominating. They're the two main weather patterns as we go through next week. Quite a, quite a significant change there as we go into next week. So the pressure pattern is likely to be shifting a little bit. Another chart to show you that is this. Again, it's the probabilistic pressure trend and red is high pressure. There's a lot of red on the chart for the next few days because as we've already seen with the jet stream to the north, high pressure is likely to dominate. These are the previous computer model runs. They're the dates going forward in time. But again, here, as we go into next week, quite a shift. Those dark reds change. It's not strongly blue. It's not, gonna, it's not telling us that it's definitely going to be low pressure after low pressure, but it is looking more changeable. What does that mean for our weather? Well, after what has been a, a pretty dry start to February, certainly across much of the southern two-thirds of the UK, that is likely to bring about a bit of a change during next week. We are more likely to see rain. Now, that's not a strong signal to lots of wet and windy weather, far from it. It's just a signal away from the drier conditions through next week. So next week is unlikely to be as dry and settled uh, as it is uh, this week. So just bear that in mind, perhaps, if you're on half term. Okay, what about beyond that? Uh, I said at the start we might talk a little bit about sudden stratospheric warming. And yes, there are now strong signals that that is likely to happen. What is sudden stratospheric warming? Well, there is uh, another video you can watch on our YouTube channel, learn about weather, all about sudden stratospheric warming. We'll put the uh, link in the comments so you can uh, go and watch that for more details on exactly what sudden stratospheric warming is. We've touched on it before uh, during these deep dives. Basically, uh, during the winter months, the North Pole points away from the sun and very high up in the stratosphere stratosphere, 30 kilometers up or more, we see strong winds developing and they form westerly winds. They go round and round a westerly wind and that is called the polar vortex. I say this is very high up in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere, and it forms every winter. But it can at times weaken and instead of having westerly winds, Every now and then, every couple of winters, those winds can weaken and sometimes reverse and become easterly winds. And when that happens, there is a chance that eventually we have a knock-on effect to the UK weather, but it doesn't happen all the time. What we are seeing from the computer projections is that that change in the polar vortex is now quite likely to happen next week. This is the European wind plot. Those winds high up in the atmosphere at uh, 10 hectopascals. The blues are the forecast. You can see we're starting here, which is actually above average. The polar vortex weakened a couple of weeks ago, but it's since strengthened once more and it's back up slightly above average. But a strong signal here, the dates along the bottom, strong signal here that those winds will be dropping off through next week and actually are likely when they go below zero, that means they've reversed. And that would be a, sudden, a major sudden stratospheric warming event. And that is quite a strong signal that's gonna happen. After that, they recover somewhat, but it's all about this drop here. Quite a strong signal from the European model. And now the Met Office computer model is also agreeing here with this red line. Again, this is for next week, that line dipping below, crucially below the zero, which means the winds have effectively reversed. And that would be 
a sudden, a major sudden stratospheric warming event. So quite a strong signal. We think now is an 80% chance that sudden stratospheric warming will occur. However, that doesn't necessarily mean there will be impacts across the UK. Not all sudden stratospheric warmings lead to cold spells across the UK. Uh, in fact, around about 70% of sudden stratospheric warmings have some kind of impact on the UK, but that means around 30% don't at all. In fact, there was one in 2019, a sudden stratospheric warming that had very little impact uh, on the UK. Of course, the one everyone remembers is the sudden stratospheric warming, which we were able to then to signal the cold spell back in 2018 and the so-called beast from the east. But not all sudden stratospheric warmings lead to beasts from the east. Many, many of them don't. But what it does mean is that when we see these sudden stratospheric warmings, there is an increased chance that the jet stream will become more wavy, more amplified. So instead of having the jet stream coming strongly across the Atlantic, it tends to uh, go in these larger waves, which means the weather patterns become more slow moving. And of course, then if we are on the cold side of that, then it, it can intensify the cold. So that can be one of the results of a sudden stratospheric warming. But equally, we could be on the other side of that and on the, the warmer side. And so we'll just stay warmer than average for a while. It just means that the weather patterns are more likely to become slow moving. So it does increase the chance of a colder spell, but it's far from guaranteed. In fact, Let's take a look at the longer range projection now from the European model for the end of the month. And this is showing the temperature anomaly. So how the temperature varies from the average, where red is above average and blue is below average. And this uh, is, we're looking down from the pole here, the surface temperatures, North America's here, blue, colder than average. And this is Northern Europe across Russia and into China red above average here but the UK is here I'll do a slightly more zoomed in look at that actually and you can actually see that the UK is is white so these are the projections for the, the last two days of February and the first five days of March so the week uh, commencing the 27th of February the projections for the temperature and you can see yes colder across northern parts of uh, uh, America warmer across Northern Europe, but actually for the UK, we are around average, hence why we are white. Now, this is a long way off. This is just one projection. So it's certainly something we need to keep an eye on. But I'm just showing you this because it doesn't necessarily mean that because we've got a sudden stratospheric warming, we are definitely going to see colder weather. Far from it. It could lead, if this scenario was right, colder air here, milder air here, it could lead to a stronger jet stream and more unsettled weather. So what we know about sudden stratospheric warming, in summary, we know there is a good chance, 80% chance, that we will see that sudden stratospheric warming. But that just means things high up in the stratosphere above the pole. There is no guarantee that that will have any impact on the UK and any possible impacts we are looking at three to two to three weeks ahead. So the end of February and into March, we will obviously be keeping you updated on any progress uh, relating to this. Aidan may well have more in the 10 day trend tomorrow. And we'll be doing more deep dives over the next few weeks to keep you updated. Hopefully that all makes sense. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with me. As I said at the start, please do hit subscribe and then you won't miss these forecasts if you're enjoying them. Leave the comments. We do read them. We'll maybe even start replying to a few more of them in the coming weeks as well when we have a little bit more time. But yes, keep up to date with the latest forecasts, not just here on YouTube, but uh, with the Met Office right across social media. And thanks very much for watching.